2002 NBA Draft, the Phoenix Suns select Amare Stoudemire from Cypress Creek High School in Orlando, Florida. What a difference uh, a year makes. Remember the high schoolers that we had early of Phoenix, and you said power. Uh, but however, this is a guy that they might have to wait on just a little bit to get an understanding of the physicality and the difference of the plan from high school to, to the NBA. But uh, this right now, I expect some other three, maybe Penn Hardaway, maybe Tom Cooley out. They've got to start rebuilding. The 19-year-old from Cypress Creek High in Orlando is with Craig Sanders. You called your man among boys in high school. How difficult is the jump going to be in the NBA and finish? If they call me a man among boys in high school, I'm about to play with a man with a man at, you know what I mean? So now I just got to kind of, you know, work on my game a little more to try to elevate my game. Sounds ready to me. Ready? right side, gives to Stoudemire, in for the jam, and it's fouled. Odom's got some room, takes it inside, it's blocked, Webo time! Oh, brother! Stoudemire is back! Amari out here playing and doing what he did right there. Get out of here! You are seeing an outstanding athlete. Look at this now, now watch to the right! How about this? Shall we have a... Oh, oh, side and Tomahawk! Oh, absolutely Tomahawk! By Amari Stoudemire. That three-pointer. Stoudemire tries to three. Back oh! in. Amari Stoudemire. Oh, my goodness. It's a three to tie the game. And the Spurs. There's the ball. Oh, 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 Amari. Oh, 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 in the face of oh, Fire yes. and one. And the rookie powers to the rack. Oh, my. The Statue of Liberty, Doug. Holy, holy, holy. Wow. That was impressive. Murphy had the ball. Stoudemire with the dunk. Shoved off with a free arm. And John's up in the lap over Richardson. Up ahead. Look out. Hello. Amari Stoudemire elevates and detonates. Are you kidding me? Devastating dunk here in Oakland. Maybe the top dunk of his career. That was savage. Roberts, who just signed a 10 day contract. Felton inside. Won't go. Duncan the rebound. Stolen by Stoudemire. Duncan's hurt. Stoudemire dunks over Duncan. Rival players we played against all the years, and so now to reconnect with them on a different level, it's a great setup. Beyond. So you you keep Shabbat and coach like you keep Shabbat like by the Jewish halacha like you, no phone yeah, yeah. or electricity. Yeah, yeah, I, I the keep. Whole nine I, yards? Yeah, for sure, man. I keep Shabbat in the halacha. I keep Shabbat no 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 phone, no electricity, um, and so I just stay locked into that, for sure, man. And you study, right? You, you know, I study every day, bro. I have a four o'clock a.m. lesson. Really? Wow. Uh, uh, with we go over like we're going over it's review for me, mm -hmm. but we're going over the laws of Shabbat with the rest of the class, and then I have like a two two p.m. afternoon lesson going over kashrut, just learning how to really kosher your kitchen, as far as food, utensils, and so forth. Um, and then I have friends that live in Jerusalem, and my, my, we we learn on the we read the Mishnah. Uh, we're going over the Gomorrah yeah, right. when it comes to Judaism um, and when it comes to like character traits and your midos, mm -hmm. it helps me it helps me also too like to control my anger uh, control my thoughts control my speech control my guard my eyes these these lessons that I'm learning along the way is helping me to become a better man and that's and that's and that's what I'm ultimately all about is just being able to become like a better individual and you know, and, it, and this is helping me a lot. Uh, Yom Kippur came around, and when Yom Kippur came around, it was always during training camp. <laughs> it happened to me my rookie year. I remember that. <laughs> and what I've noticed, it comes with maturity, right? When I was in my 20s, I was young, wanted to party, wanted to hang out, wanted to just be you know, a rock star. And then as I, as I got older, I started maturing more. Mm -hmm. I started realizing, wait, there's more to life than just parties. Let me, let me disconnect myself from that from that world and connect myself back with Torah. You know, but every year, like, overdose of, like, sprints and cardio. Okay, Yom Kippur came around, training camp. I would, I would run my sprints, and the trainers would just be right there watching me so that was so to prevent me from fainting. Trainers, my trainer would stand beside me every time and just watch me see if I faint. I remember that, and my, my teammates were gonna be like, what is this guy doing? 
right? He's on a fast. He's not drinking water. He's not eating, but he's still Bounce still a training. Bit, then you head off to Israel. What 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 made you choose Israel? Did you feel like your time in the NBA was up? You wanted a new challenge, something different? And I realized that you know the ideal of like you know obviously Judaism, but obviously like just being a Bible scholar. The ideal is just to be able to to live like the prophets lived, and how to how to connect yourself with a total with a total aspect of righteousness. And how do you do that? Because I was searching for that, you know what I'm saying, for a long time. And so that's that's kind of what led me to like going through the conversion um, uh, in Israel. You decided to uh, convert to uh, Judaism. What inspired that? Details of like the intricate learnings, and so. Once I realized there's a structure of that, once I realized there's a way that you can really like learn all the blessings and how to build a close relationship with God, I was like, this is where, this is where I need to be. A troubling childhood growing up and having to move to run from the police, you know what I'm saying, from one step to the next and all that. But I was, I was able to kind of somewhat um, learn from different cultures on where we moved to. Business school right now, so I'm going for my master in business air player, you feel me? Like I attacked the rim on every by any means, you know what I'm saying? But I think I think the ideal of, of, of my career is that I was able to persevere, you know, not only not only through life, as we talked about earlier, but also through like the ups and downs. Yeah, also and also through like the, the the injuries of my career, being able to persevere and still come back, play eighty two games and then become first team all NBA and then still, be, you know, get six-time All-NBA and still play 18 years of professional mm -hmm. basketball despite all that. So the perseverance, you know, is, is, is kind of where it's at. As far as a basketball player, I was a part of the evolution of the game. I'm proud of what I've been able to accomplish, man. I thank God for allowing me to play 18 years and still be able to maintain a career and provide for my family. Um, so it, it was a success for me. situation for all of us to continue to learn still in the path of righteousness we realize there's nothing else everything else is vanity so once we realize that everything is vanity and the only thing we have is cut those spare holes God and that's the only path that we should take may you strive for greatness Amen. Hey. Right. Hi. yo what is it yo what is up guys? I hope you enjoyed that video. Just to give you a little backstory on why I did a video about Mari Sotomayor. Last week I was in Miami and I went to shul on Friday night. And I walk into the shul and I look to my right and I'm like... Like what? Like... Like what? But like, hold on. <laughs> so I decided to take advantage of the opportunity. So after shul is over, I go up to him like, yo, what's up? dap him up and he was super chill he's so nice in person uh i ended up walking him to his house it was like a half hour walk we spoke a lot like became best friends i feel like <laughs> i don't know what he thinks about that but yeah the next day uh shabbat morning i saw him again and it was really cool and i pretty much followed him and stuck my way into like this house and we had the whole shabbat meal together <laughs> i wasn't supposed to be there and when they found out i met him last night they all looked at me all sus like what are you doing here? But yeah, besides that, it was a really cool experience and I sadly did not get his number, which is okay. Amari, much respect to you, man. And if you're ever watching this video, I hope we can link up again soon. Uh, you inspire me, you motivate me, and I spent the past like two weeks working on this video for you. So I hope you enjoy it. 
and I respect so much how when you finished the NBA you came to Israel for four years and you pretty much stamped your legacy in Israel and the NBA. You know, went to Yeshiva for four years in Or Sameach, learned, converted, came back and you're just continuing an amazing legacy. Showing Jews that you can be religious and keep Shabbat and still have a job in the NBA doing something that could be like your dream. And that's just that's just respectable man. Like cheers to you, keep doing what you're doing. And yeah, I hope this video could really show people that there's no there's no excuse not to be religious. If Amari could do it, married with five kids and literally living the NBA dream, a superstar for the New York Knicks, anybody can do it. There's no excuse. It just all depends on how bad you want it. So yeah, much respect to Amari. Um, keep doing what you do best. And for the rest of you guys watching, I hope this could really inspire you, motivate you, and there's a little project, you know, a little cool project I wanted to make. But yeah, if you guys like this video, please leave a thumbs up, a like, because every time you like, my video stays on the rotation, like in the YouTube, uh, for 24 more hours. Subscribe, leave a comment how I could be better next time. And I think that's it for today. Until next time, peace. That's the judge. Wait, wait.